Hello and welcome back to Ride Rescue. Uh, as I said in my last video of the convertible top, for the guy that wants to do this project, I want to give as much detail as possible to help them out. So you can skip over if you don't want to really <laughs> see the whole thing and you want to just get the highlights. Wow, I finally have back window perfection. Now I can start putting on the top. And the top is reinforced with this panel. So that follows right along that top bow. And I've seen people that have put tops on and they, they don't staple the center piece before they staple the front. So they'll staple on each corner. And then when they pull it tight, this has a tendency to ride up. And then the, there's an arch in the back and then there's a hard edge. So you have to watch that edge and make sure that it follows the bow. And then you have a really nice straight edge across the back of the window. So the critical point now is to make sure this is exactly centered side to side. Well, here it goes. <laughs> I'm confident it's in the center. I want to start from the center. I want to make sure that hard edge is against the bow. Let me take the plunge. Now that I've got this bow stapled down, I want to get the panels aligned the way they would fall naturally. And then I'll put a mask, masking tape line. That'll be my guide where I pull this around and staple it. Now that I have my guides, the trial and error for these pieces. Uh, the next step, before I get down into these side panels, is I want to tighten up the top of the top. And in order to do that, I have to pull this around the front bow. But one of the common problems with adjusting all of the metal um, parts of the top is the, the fitment. Uh, I adjusted all of this fitment to be perfect. Um, which you have to do before you start putting it all together. I had adjusted this arch and that arch stayed. Sometimes this will drop down when you get everything tight. One thing that did tighten up is that latch. That latch now, you can't really see it in this image, but right next to that chrome piece, there is a stopper. That stopper is about an about a quarter of an inch off from the A-pillar frame. So I need to adjust this point of the top now, which is something that typically happens. Uh, I'll adjust everything perfectly in the frame rack, and then once I start tightening everything up, there's just enough play in all the parts where this will pull away from the windshield. And it makes it really difficult to latch the top down. So now, now that I have the pads on and the back window in, most of the tension is on the top, and I know this is correct, so I know I don't have to make any adjustments down here in the quarter panel. In order to get this, this latch into this groove, when it's all the way forward, as you pivot, it doesn't quite reach. It's, it's probably about a half of an inch away. And then once it's clamped down, because I had to t loosen it up so that it would reach, then it doesn't pull this stop right here all the way against the A-pillar right here. So it's about a quarter of an inch away, and I want to bring this in about a quarter of an inch to help pull it forward. So by doing that, uh, loosen up this nut and loosen up this nut. still have probably about an eighth of an inch to go. And 
Another common problem with these top pads is this corner right here. They have a tendency to pull out. The tack strip just isn't very substantial and the way it is the tack strip is reinforced and held into this corner, they, they have a tendency to fail a lot. On this corner, there's a pretty good tack strip and a, and a decent staple there. These hold really well. I also glue all along here, but just to play it safe, because I've had several tops fail right here in this corner, there's a void right here. There's two layers of metal that are about that far apart, which is just enough to drive a screw right into this corner. So I'll get a flathead screw, drive it right in here, and that'll guarantee that this doesn't pop. When they come up, when they have failed, they don't really completely fail, but I don't lose this attachment. It just lifts up and then it puts pressure on the top of the inside of the top and leaves a little bulge right here. And then I want to make sure that it can't rub. It's just below the surface and there's just enough foam in that padding that it can't rub on the top and actually rub through it. And there's the finished product. So got a good solid staple as well as just an extra little precaution screw to hold this corner down. I need to go back and staple this back down because when I adjusted this forward it pulled the this pad forward and it made this lean. Can't have that leaning so I had to take these staples out. So I got my heater in there again. I'll get it nice and toasty warm. I've seen instructions that say to mark this and then pull it an inch to three quarters of an inch over. I've done that and then these end up sagging. So there's a delicate balance there. Uh, yeah, it's nice to be able to, to pull this rib super, super tight and you want to make that flat, but you don't want these to start drooping and then it can really mess up how the top fits too. And then I've had it where this center bow was pulled so tight, these staples actually started to pull out. But I've also seen these tops, it's not something that I've done, but I've, I've seen it happen where people don't get it tight enough and they get out in the sun and they droop. But those are just some of the things you have to keep in mind. Everything has to be balanced. You gotta have a balanced pressure on the back window, the pads, and all of the top mechanism. So it's a lot of trial and error. It's a matter of putting on, taking it off, putting it on, taking it off, just like I had to do with the back window. And especially these side panels. I see a lot of waves in these side panels where you have to take everything off and pull this forward and make sure this is glued properly up against the glass, or I should say, underneath the glass and the seal. It's just a matter of taking that extra time. Now to make sure the top is centered side to side, I'll put a clamp on each corner and then by pulling this forward and getting as much slack as I can out of the top, then I can mark where that bow is. Now is a really good time to put the cable in. Uh, these cables, some recommend you replace them every time you replace the top. I inspect them. I mean, if they're perfect, there's no frayed ends. Uh, the plastic coating is all smooth. Uh, the spring isn't stretched. I don't see any reason to replace it. I've never had any problems with ones. And that then screws in right here and this end screws on right there. I just leave it loose and then you can come back in from the inside and attach this point. If you attach it now you have a tendency to have the cable binding up while you're trying to do everything. I put a clamp on each end um, to center it up make sure it's 
right where it needs to be. I had to stretch it a little bit, which was good. And then I pulled that chalk line up over the top about a half an inch. And you just kind of have to work it around since it's got an arch to it. But I wanted to clamp it down first as I work this top down now. What I'll be looking for is make sure everything is pulling tight and smooth. I would say it's not quite enough. It's not quite down all the way, but as I pull it down, it's still just a little bit loose. So the instructions say three quarters to an inch. Three quarters is probably right. So start minimal and then if you have to pull it further then you're not weakening the material. A little trick I learned instead of pulling it around and stapling it and then having to pull the staples out and then stapling it and trial and error because it always is I like to use a good high strength adhesive uh, this is a 3M 90 adhesive uh, works for fabrics, metals, woods. Spray it on both surfaces, but I like to mask it off because this stuff doesn't come off. And the nice thing about this adhesive is it gives you some working time. And then over time, especially when you, you screw this seal on and it holds that tight, that bond gets really, really strong. Let it dry enough so that it's really tacky and, it's, and it doesn't come off. And I'll start with each one of these points. I pulled it really tight from side to side. And so I know it's pretty much where it needs to be, side to side. And then I'll just start working it as I go across. And I'll set it to this chalk line and I'll pull it about three quarters of an inch now if that adhesive works and does its job I will hold everything tight just, just a little bit too tight. That looks really good. You can see I've got a little puckering here on the sides, but that's tucked, taken up with this piece and the cable, once that cable is in, it doesn't take all of it out, but in time, being out in the sun, it stretches and shrinks and stretches and shrinks and, and just smooths out all of these wrinkles. I'm going to leave the heater on inside of it. And I'll let that glue set up, and then I can start stapling it down. Sometimes on these older convertibles, if you get the top too tight, the doors won't fit. It'll jam the doors here in the ends. So wanted to check the doors and make sure they didn't sag and I gotta adjust them again. All right, I'll let it get good and hot, soften it up, and I'll open it back up, and I'll staple from here to there, and then I'll have to work this corner. It needs to be pulled forward. It's really hard to do until the center is all tacked down. I had to run the top up and down a few times and then keep filling the, the pump reservoir to finally bleed all the air out of it, so I finally have that working right. Now I'll be able to quickly put it up and down and start stapling along this edge. So I'm really comfortable now with this area of the top and where I have the tension on the material in the back window. I'm still a little bit loose right along here. I'm very loose here at the end, but that's just because of the contour of the bow. Uh, I'm a little loose right here at these two ribs. So I'm going to pull those down just a little bit, and then at the same time I want to pull out. So 
I'll test this side first and make sure that's the way I want it. And then I'll do the other side and then I'll be able to staple this in. <coughs> and I'll be able to staple all this in. So, so as you can see, there's some wrinkles right here that I, I can't quite get out. I need to be able to pull it side to side. Uh, so I need to pull this forward just a little bit and this out just a little bit. But I'm not comfortable with the way all of this is starting to pull. Uh, a lot of it's pulling forward and I'm not being able to get enough stress to pull it back. So before I start stapling this front piece, I'm going to tie both corners in the way I have it, just with some spray adhesive. And then I'm going to start working with the side curtains around the back window before I get much further on the front here. Okay, so this is my first attempt. And you can see how everything kind of puckers up. So I left all the this side loose. I didn't bolt it down. I only bolted it down across the back window. And you can see how it puckers. Um, this is where you have to be really careful um, not to push anything too far. But I haven't clamped the front latches yet. So I will clamp them down now and being really careful and watching this corner and that back end as I clamp it, make sure I'm not stressing and ripping anything. I didn't quite latch it all the way down. I just partially latched it just enough to, to catch. And then I can go back and, and double check everything. This looks great. I will make sure the other side looks the same. And then we'll pull that window back out again and I'll start working my way around the sides. Well, this is the first attempt with having all of it stapled down. This wrinkle right here, will pull out by pulling this forward. These wrinkles, the only way I found to get rid of these is to pull this around towards the back window and that will pull all of this back and around. Same thing on this side, not quite as bad. The finish across the top of the window is looking really good. This wrinkle here is a common problem with these tops. The only thing I've ever been able to do to get rid of that is age. Um, once it's been out in the weather a few times, uh, the heat and things start to shrink up right here across. Uh, I can pull this corner a little bit tighter before I staple all this front piece on and that will take out some of that. I'm getting real close. It's looking good. It's like maybe one last time taking out that back window, pulling those around. Put my space heater in the car. Closed it all up, got the top really warm. Uh, some of it moved around a little bit. These wrinkles smoothed out a little. I still need to pull it over. So I make notes on my sheet. Uh, I want to pull this around a quarter of an inch. There's an area inside uh, where this window is and the side curtain that's really wrinkly. And so it needs to be pulled down. I need to pull it down about... Well, in fact, I need to make note of that. I think I need to pull that one down about three-eighths of an inch. The outer is okay this way. <laughs> so in order for me to do the inner and pull that down, I've got to take both layers off and then pull that inner down and then put the outer right back where it was. So I will mark that outer piece to, so that I get it back in the exact same spot. And then it's just a whole bunch of stapling. And then the same thing on this side. I'm actually the opposite on this side. The outer is okay along here. So I'll have to mark that. And the, the inner where this window is, is actually pulling this down. And that's what's leaving that gap. It's, it's pulling all this down into this corner right here. And I need to relieve that stress. So I've got to pull all the staples out along this area. So this inner, then I got to move it in about, probably about a quarter of an inch. And then again, I've got to pull this corner around about a quarter of an inch. And mark this outer then, so I get it back exactly where it was. And I'll pull all of these staples out. And then I need to pull this over this way. But first I need to pull this 
back out of the way. Move all these staples from the inner piece, relax it about a quarter of an inch, put it back on, and then pull this around as much as I can. You can see the first step was to relieve the pressure that was pulling this window down. So I've done that now. And now it's just a matter of taking this area and then stretching it around. I left a mark right here. That's my goal line. I want to stretch it that far. Uh, so probably what I'm going to end up having to do is start with this at that point, and then I can pull all this area down around this radius. Well, I am so close on this side of the car. I've got the heater going inside. I'm getting everything really warm so I can start working this area a little bit. Uh, it's, it's still a little loose here. I need to pull this forward a little bit and bring it around this corner. And hopefully that'll take some of this out. Uh, it won't take all of it out. That's just going to have to relax with a lot of sun. I had the same issue with my Buick and, and that did work out after uh, one summer. This area, there's a little bit of wave right here, but this glue strip right here that goes underneath the trim or the, the seal, when I pull that forward, that will smooth this panel out, as well as this area here, when it gets really warm, it should stretch and relax, and this area should smoothen right out. Uh, the gap along the, the window and the apron has relaxed and closed up on both sides. But sadly, I've got some wrinkles right here that there's no way I can pull forward with their, this area. I'm going to have to pull this back window out one last time. And I need to pull it this way just a little bit more. And by pulling this way and pulling this in this area out, that will pull this wrinkle out. I decided to let the top just kind of conform all night long. I left it overnight, I left the heater on, I uh, got it good and warm, and once everything looked and appeared to be settling in place and stretching out correctly, uh, this corner I needed to pull a little tighter, so I re-sprayed this area and this side panel here, um, and then I was able to stretch this around. I wanted to pull it forward this way just a little bit and then bring this around to really pull this corner in and once i adhered it then i just ran a row of staples all across this tack strip and then marked where i want to cut it so you can see there are holes in here uh, those holes are for the rubber weather strip that goes across here to seal up that windshield before i put the front seal on. Uh, these little puckers uh, get in the way and they don't stay down. So I'm going to just pie cut all these little puckers out so that I can get a really smooth finish right here. Now you can see where I've done a little uh, relief cut, little, little pie cuts. I'll go back now and spray this whole area with a good coat of adhesive and then I will put that outer trim piece on. In order to get this bubble right here tight against this edge, uh, you have to really twist it and force it up and then run a row of staples as close to this sewing seam as you can. And then I'll just have to work it and try to keep this edge of the bubble right along the edge of this bow. So I marked uh, the center line on here. I also marked it here. I'll start with the center and I have to move and twist it to get it around otherwise this this rubber seal has a tendency to pull in and and then it won't stay flat against the windshield when this top is put down and it causes some issues right along in this area. So I just have to kind of gradually work and pucker and then I'll do pie cuts along this edge. Force that stitching forward and try to keep this distance even all the way along. So 
So now you can see. So lift this flap, staple all along this edge as close to the stitching as possible. And then I'll spray again all along this double area and then re-stick that down and then contour as much as I can to go underneath the weather strip. I want to test it now, so I'll put the top down and, and strap it and seal it and see how this looks when it gets smashed. What I did is I just opened up the two areas and I gently just trimmed off all of these stitches, opened it up, peel it back as far as I can, and then I'm going to try to contour with the body on this foam without cutting the top material at all. It looks good. Now it's just a matter of pulling this under. Try to make that look as nice as possible. And then I just have to staple it here and try to hide the staple if at all possible. After spending about an hour, hour and a half, Playing with this, peeling it back, gluing it down, getting to the point where I felt comfortable stapling it. I stapled all along the edge and then pulled the flap back and put adhesive in between those two. And these corners just don't, do not want to stay down. So I glued them really well. And then once that glue is dried, I will put in a couple of staples just to hold it into place. I don't want to put any staples that are exposed along here uh, any more than I have to. I, I'm looking at the old top and this corner was stapled on the outside and then the staples were painted black. So it looks like I'm going to do the same thing just to guarantee those corners stay down. Finally, the front is completely finished. I still need to pull that down a little bit on the side, get some of that wrinkle out. The, the cable helped, but it didn't completely pull it out when getting it out in the elements will shrink it up. So at this point, I need to do this area. I need to pull this forward to get that wrinkle out and then glue this flat in. And where that glues in is right along in here. So spray glue that channel, spray glue the back side of that flap and then pull it forward and stick it down. Once this adhesive has been sprayed on, wait till it tacks over and it's not sticky anymore. Which it is perfect now, so I can pull that down as, as tight as I can make it. have to cut a relief cut in the middle of this radius but it looks good need to cut a relief about right here and then once I put that rubber seal in there, this channel, and screw it down, it'll hold it a lot more secure. And I just need to go back and trim. I wish it was all that easy. Because now that I've got this front seal in, it's perfect. It's right where it needs to be. There's a good gap. It needs to be about a half of an inch between the frame and the glass. And that's exactly what it is. But this back window is down about three quarters of an inch. So it needs to go up and back so that it fills in this gap too. And I'll put in these seals. And on the other side, I put in the other side first just to test it. And it's too far back. The glass isn't touching the seal. Well, it's a metal 
uh, channel L shape kind of a thing uh, where it goes up and around and with the screws in place you can bend that seal and it pushes the rubber right up against the back of the glass and ended up sealing it perfectly on the other side and I had to move the glass back and up on the other side and I'm going to have to do the same thing on this one so I'll show you how I did that. I'll start by putting this piece in first and I'm going to make sure that gap is tight I want to keep these aligned as much as possible. Okay, I'll roll this window down and there's one more screw right there. And then we'll start adjusting this window and get it all to fit. Oh, I'll go ahead and put this piece in first. And it's the same way, it's just a matter of a few screws along that back edge. Since I glued this flap <laughs> over the holes, I use a uh, sharp Phillips screwdriver to find the holes and sometimes you can kind of see them punch through and then there's one more down here you have to put the top down about halfway down in order to find that one and then drive a screw into it and there's also a seal down on the bottom that has a little push pin I want to close up that gap I'll leave them just a little bit loose so that I can adjust this. And now I can adjust that up tight. These two don't quite line up with the glass. So it's just a matter of getting a screwdriver pry bar behind that and bend it out. This is where I was talking about it's got a metal plate in it. And it's fairly soft metal so it's fairly easy to bend. I'll line those up so for a nice smooth plane. There we go. Now I need to adjust this glass. I need to go that way and that way. And in order to go Further up, I need to take this plate off. Well, this bracket here is what stops the window from going up or down. I'll loosen that up and move it out of the way. And then to go back, I need to loosen up these two. And that'll move it back. And that'll move it up. Now, I need to adjust to the door. It's too far forward, it's hitting the glass, so. So along here, there's a gap. There's just enough gap that it'd be whistling in your ear in the wind. So I'm gonna bend that channel out just a little bit. That's perfect. Now I'll check the door gap again. Okay, it's too far back now. I need to bring it back forward a little bit. It's just a little bit crooked. I need to twist it so that I have to loosen the back bottom bolt and I can pull that around just a little bit. I need to go back that way, just, just a hair. Putting this back cover on that covers up all the staples, this tack strip comes down around and just comes around the edge. So I want to put the tack strip just up from that and because there's a screw that goes right into the end of this and there's a little stainless steel trim piece that kind of finishes off at the end of this piece. And if 
you bend it into an L shape, then you can run the staples down along there and then run it and try to cover both sides of the staples. And I would, I always hug this edge right along covering up the staples. Um, if you do it right down the center and then you fold this over, sometimes you can kind of see a little bit of an indentation uh, where if you do it from this side, then you run the staples along there and you have a nice clean finish. So as long as you hug that edge about there, you're good. And the staples that I use, these staples uh, I believe are 5 16 staples um, and that's all my gun will take. So I have to use the good old hand <laughs> staple gun and run a half inch staple when I'm doing this back bow, especially right around in here. You've got the thickness of the, the window material, you've got the top which is double thickness along here, and you've got the pad that is just in this area, and that pad has a little bit of foam. So these staples, if you use the same staples as they use everywhere else, this area will lift out. Uh, the staples won't hold. Um, for this much of an area, these staples just barely hold. They won't work their way out as long as I staple this piece on top of it with my uh, other staple gun. That will hold these other staples in. When driving these staples in, I start here and then I'll pull it all the way across. <clears throat> Sorry, my video went dead. So what I do is I start it on that corner and I only put one staple in and then I'll bring it all the way across here and pull it tight and then I can look down it and make sure that was perfectly straight. If you just start going across, you, you've got a tendency to wander. But by doing both ends and then I was able to guide, keep it straight, look down it, and then run all my staples down. What I did is I marked the end of this tack strip so that the screw for this final will go in right before the end. On the other side, it's extra long, so I will have to trim the other end. I have it all stapled, it's all straight, and it's just a matter of walking that down around. Now I can put the little stainless steel end cap on there. And it's done. Well, thank you for watching this uh, little segmented series of three videos for uh, the convertible top of the, this 69 Camaro. Appreciate you watching. Uh, I tried to squeeze in as much detail as I could. I, I hope the uh, the guy that wants to do this project can get enough information from these. I hope they enjoy it. And if you wanted to just see how it's done and skimmed over it, I really appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for more upcoming videos of the Camaro build. I'm going to be doing some, some polishing and some touch-up paint. And there's a lot of chips in the car. Uh, the pinstriping is, is scratched. I want to try my best at, at saving the pinstriping that's on it. So tune in next time. Appreciate you tuning in. Give me a like. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave me a comment. Love to hear from you. Thanks again. Goodbye for now.